Christopher here with Bean Energy. Today I wanted to go through some of the features and the setup procedures for this Ant BMS. This is a Chinese BMS that is Bluetooth enabled, has temperature sensors, can do 20S configurations, and even do less in series if you like. I had a few problems seeing it set up. Figured I'd do a video real quick um, explaining what problems I had how I fixed them, and how it's working so far for me. This is my SPIM 08HP project. Yet another one, right? I've got a, these are, these are two in parallel. So I bolted two in parallel, 14 in series. This is 28 cells in total, which makes for about, what, 50 volts or so nominal. I've got my 20S BMS configured for 14S. Now, how did I do that? I had some trouble because the diagrams that I found online were contradictory. You've got your black wire on this end, and then you start with your positives. So, so the way I've got my battery set up is this is my main negative. So this is where the um, heavy gauge BMS wires connect to, and this is also where my black wire off of my um, sense connections connects to. So black wire there. Very next wire goes to the positive end of this set of two cells right down here. And then the next wire goes to the next set of cells just like any BMS. Now where it gets tricky is that when we get to cell one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, cell number seven. So that's gonna be on this connector. I'm gonna connect cell number seven. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna then jump to the next connector, skip a wire, and use the next one in. And this will also connect to cell seven. So let me show you what that looks like here on the battery, is this is connection number seven, cell number seven, and I have two wires connected here, unlike all the other ones so far, which have had one. And then I continue on as I was, where the next wire goes to the next cell in series. And then, which I don't think this one's odd for a BMS, when you get to the very top, you've got your last sense wire, which is white, and then you also have your pack positive which is red, and those will both be connected to the main positive of the pack. So there you have it. So this has uh, 14 cells. So you've got your 14 sense wires, but then you also have a black one for main negative. You have an extra wire midway through the pack, and you have the red wire. And then I've just taken the rest and wrapped them up here. I could snip them off right at the connector um, if this was gonna be a permanent battery pack, but I hate making things permanent even though it would be nicer and I may end up using this BMS elsewhere so I have wrapped them up and I will keep them in case I want to make a 20S pack later. If you look online you'll see some different wiring diagrams for this BMS. Um, one of them being that you just you start at black you go for first sense and you go all the way across until you run out of cells and then you just leave them empty until you get to the red and then you connect that to main positive. That didn't work for me. I'll show you here what I've got on the app. So this is what we've got on the app and it will show you the cell voltages. Now you'll also notice that I am pretty imbalanced on these because I wasn't good about making sure that everything was at the same voltage. Oh, one of my batteries is done charging. Um, I didn't make sure that these were at the same voltage before I built the pack, so that's on me. But I'm also going to do some experimentation with the balancing, because supposedly this BMS has active balancing. You may have heard of active balancing versus passive balancing. With passive balancing, which is what most BMSs have, as the pack voltage gets close to full, I think the one that I had uh, as I built my last pack was when you hit 4 volts or 4.1 volts on a cell then it'll start bleeding with a resistor the high cells if there are some cells that are lower. So if you've got you know 14 cells here and as you're charging it one of them reaches 4.1 volts before any of the others 
then the passive balancer will apply some resistance and bleed off some power from the high cell as the other ones continue to charge. Now the problem becomes the, when the resistor, resistance is so low and your uh, charger is so fast because if you're only able to bleed you know, 20 milliamps while you're charging at you know, 10 amps or 20 amps, then relatively speaking, you're not really gonna get any balancing done. If the cells all stay in balance really well, then maybe over 30, 40, 50 charges, it can get everything in balance and keep everything in balance. So that would be an important reason to make sure that your cells are balanced before you build the pack if you're gonna be doing a passive balanced system. Now, my, my testing and theory here is if I've got an active balancer, it doesn't matter so much because once I build my pack, I can apply my active balancing and then get everything balanced after I build the pack and it's easier than trying to get all my cells at the same voltage before I put the pack together, especially with used cells. Seems like with new cells, as long as you don't charge or discharge them when you get them, they're all gonna be right at the same voltage or very close to each other. These are all used cells. I did capacity testing on them before I put them together so that I could match them up correctly which means I've messed with them all. There was also the problem of some of these cells I used from a previous pack that I built, and since I already tested them, I left them at the voltage that they were, so they've, you know, I had some that were quite a bit higher than the others. If you get to a point where you have one or two cells that really need to just be discharged a lot, what I've done in the past as well, and what I did with this, was take a, um, one of these chargers I got over here, these Skymax, um, B6 AC chargers and you can apply that to that one cell or one pair of cells and Do some discharging on that or charging on that <clears throat> to try and get it closer to the pack so that you can get it all worked out All right, so that's enough about balancing um, Let's go on to some of the other pieces for this BMS now. It does have temperature probes um, So it's got two of them and they're they're set up in series. So you've got this one here and then the wire goes out to this one here. It also I believe includes a wire where if you just wanted to use the one sensor you could do that straight to the board. And those work, it shows up in, blue, BM, in the BMS software. Some of the things here, your charge over voltage alarm per cell. I don't want to go over 4.2. I'm really not too concerned about making sure that my pack is absolutely fully charged. I would rather it not be totally charged than to have it go over 4.2. Um, same thing with the over voltage protection. I've got those both set at 4.2. Now my under voltage, these cells are rated for two and a half volts. Most BMSs will cut off at three to 3.2 volts. I wanna get the full pack voltage or full pack capacity out of them and these have a fair bit of capacity between two and a half and three volts. So I went ahead and set that down to two and a half. The other very important piece to change would be your number of cells in series. So I have it set to 14S. So you'll notice that if I come in here and I set this to 20, if it does that and doesn't change the 14S, that means that the BMS got disconnected. If you go scroll back to the main screen, it should reconnect to the BMS Back to settings, come here to the 14, I'm going to set this to 20, set, yes. You heard the BMS beep, so now we can go back to charge, and you'll see here that we've got a lot of voltages that don't match up or are near zero or at five volts or something because we don't have 20 cells in series. So let's go back and set that to 14S again. So you've got your, your temperatures, right? So if you've got like a lithium iron phosphate battery and you wanna make sure that you don't charge under a certain temperature, you can set that, that's a beautiful thing. If you got your battery capacity in here, this is something I need to play with and see how well that works for measuring how much capacity you have left because it as long as you run your wires through the BMS, can measure how much amperage you're pulling out as you use it. And it actually has a Hall Effect sensor input. So if you have this on, I guess like a scooter or an e-bike or a little motorcycle, 
then you could actually get like your mile per hour reading or whatever on an LCD screen, which is kind of cool and something I want to play with. Um, this does have a button for balancing. Power on, charge on, hit balance. Now I can go to charge. Now you'll see that we've got green on a lot of the cells. I'm assuming that means it's balancing them. I ran this overnight and it actually got more out of balance than it was. It's now at 0.4 volts between the highest and the lowest. So I'm not convinced that the ba active balancing on this works. We're gonna play around with that and see. All right, so one more thing on this BMS that I wanted to show you guys is when you get everything connected, the BMS doesn't automatically come on. So let's disconnect this real quick. So you'll see that all the LEDs went off. So connect this back up. The power LED is right up in here and that is currently off even with all the balance leads connected. So in order to get this BMS activated and to turn on, you need to short these two pins, which are the same pins used for the LCD screen with anywhere from three to 12 volts. So what I did is I've got plenty of extra batteries around here and I connected some leads and this one's got a little pokey thing on it just to make it a little easier and just going to short this for just a second. Just like that. Ah, it's right down here. Yes, you can see it blinking. So there we are. Now we're powered on. There is my Ant BMS. I got this for about 100 bucks on AliExpress. I'll drop a link down below to that. It came with all of the sense wires. It came with the temperature sensors. And actually for 100 bucks, it included an LCD screen. I haven't figured out how to make that work. You could get it for a little bit less. I was kind of afraid that the Bluetooth and the app wouldn't work very well. Um, if I had to do it again, I might just forego the LCD screen and just use Bluetooth. It's almost cheap enough that you could get a, a old Android phone and mount that somewhere if you really wanted to have it as a permanent screen. That would be easy enough to do. Stay tuned, I will be putting this battery, I'll be finishing it up, adding all the leads for the positive and the negative and some a breaker switch and whatnot and installing this in an ammo case as a little portable 48 volt battery that I can use for different projects around the house. So if that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned and I will see y'all next time. Mm -hmm.